Hello, I'm Chris Sugden. One summer afternoon, my wife Elaine and I walked round the village of Castlethorpe in Yorkshire, a beautiful hamlet built all around a large village green the size of a decent football pitch. At one end stands a small church, and from its steps you can see the mansion of Castle Howard, which fills the horizon. But at the end of the green, you can see something else. A couple of square metres are cordoned off with small pillars and chains. Inside the cordoned off area is a small plinth, and on it are carved a dozen names of those from this small hamlet who fell in the 1914-18 war. A dozen young men who clearly will have kicked a ball about on this same village green, perhaps done their courting under the chestnut tree which shades a bench at one side. Now they are commemorated forever on that same green with their names in stone, though their bodies perhaps lie hundreds of miles, miles away in France. Elaine and I sat on that bench and looked out on the green and Castle Howard beyond. And we could see something else. On top of that plinth, in the middle of our field of vision, standing about six feet high, was a simple stone cross. And I thought, how odd. How odd that the deaths at an early age of a dozen men from this small village should be commemorated by a stone cross, reminding us of another death of a youngish man at the age of 33. Why do crosses commemorate people's deaths? Why is the death of Jesus remembered as we remember other people's deaths? We commemorate the deaths of those young men at Castlethorpe with the deaths of the 900,000 who died in the First World War from the British forces and the hundreds of thousands of others who've died in wars following because we recognise that we benefit by their deaths. Their deaths were in the cause of our country's freedom. Their deaths were a sacrifice. They did not find life insupportable, far from it. What they found insupportable was that their children and grandchildren might not be free. And Jesus' death at 33 was not because he found life unsupportable. It was because there was no other way to deal with the sins of humanity than die in the place of human beings. But is Jesus' death commemorated with theirs because he also died and he also gave his life as a sacrifice? No, because if we only commemorated Jesus' death, we would still be in our sins and have no hope. That cross was empty. We do not remember a dead Jesus. We worship a living Jesus who rose from the dead. The cross is on that memorial because Jesus overcame death. He rose from the dead. He promises that there is life beyond the grave. Jesus' resurrection invites us to a new heaven and new earth where there's no more crying or pain, where there are beautiful sights and sounds, where there's art that Rembrandt could only dream of and symphonies that even Beethoven never heard. All that awaits. All that hope is symbolised by the empty cross at Castlethop and empty crosses at war memorials across many lands. You will also find on many memorials and gravestones from the two world wars these words. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. These are the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples on the last evening of his life, over the last supper before he was betrayed, arrested, flogged and crucified. Why did he say this? 
There's a famous story from one of the notorious prisoner of war camps of World War II. The guards were very harsh, and one evening at the end of the work party, they counted up the spades and found that there was one spade missing. They paraded the men. They asked that the person who had concealed or lost a spade own up. No one moved. The guards suspected that the spade would be used to dig an escape route. Again they asked who had removed it. No one moved. The guards then threatened the men that they would shoot the front row of soldiers if the person responsible did not own up. No one moved. The guards cocked their rifles and then one man stepped forward. I removed the shovel, he said, and was immediately shot. The troops were lined up to march back to camp. The shovels were recounted. Not one was missing. That man saved his friends from death. Jesus said, there's no greater sign of love. Was it worth these people dying? In two world wars, young people of the ages of 18, 19, 20 and 21 deliberately put themselves at risk because they believed there was something so awful, so terrible, that it was worth dying to ensure it did not happen. They believed that even if they did not see the result, other people would. Can we believe that great evil can be stopped? That it will not have the last word? That it's worth putting our lives on the line to stop it? Week after week, we come to remember somebody in church who did believe it. For us, every Sunday is Remembrance Sunday because we remember Jesus. Jesus saw that a great evil was engulfing humanity. It was not the Roman Empire, not poverty, not slavery, not environmental degradation. He saw that a greater evil than any of those, humanity's own selfishness, self-centeredness and rebellion against God. He saw that this would destroy people, both in this world and eternally. This was such a great evil that he was willing to do anything to save people from it, but it cost him his life. He knew that selfishness and self-centeredness and rebellion against God was so destructive that it killed people. The people we're remembering today decided in one way or another that there was something more important than survival and that they were willing to lose their most precious gift, their own lives, to secure it. They were heroes. And what they did is called sacrifice. Contrast that with a prevalent view today. If you like doing something and it does no harm to others, then do it. If it's legal, do it. If it's an inconvenience to you, then don't do it. And we no longer have heroes, we have celebrities. The Bible tells us that the result of sin, of rebellion against God, is death. Death literally, in shorter lifespan, but death also in separation from God forever. But God loves us so much, he does not want that to happen to us. He wants to call us back to him, to forgive us for whatever our sins are to receive us back closely to him. And that's why he put himself where we should be. He took the death that is our due on himself. But he did not stay dead. His tomb has never been found. He was seen by many people after his death. He talked and ate with them. They claimed that death could not hold him that he'd risen from the dead. He'd risen to that life of the kingdom of God where there is true justice and real peace and forgiveness and new life, where the lion and lamb would lie down together. 
He took the death that is due us on himself. And if we accept that, if we say that, yes, Jesus, your death was for me, then he says, and my resurrection is for you. You can share my life that has overcome death. If there is no certainty of ultimate justice, of that life of the kingdom of God where wrongs will be righted, then those who put their lives on the line for us in our armed forces and those in the public services and in the police and others, they all get cynical. Why is sacrifice noble? Because sacrifice is the only way to deal with evil at its root. The one thing evil and sin cannot and will not do is to sacrifice itself. But Jesus showed that sacrifice of oneself leads to victory. Paul wrote to the Roman Christians in chapter 5 of his letter, verse 6. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we now then have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Jesus' death is not just a noble gesture. It is the path to victory over death and resurrection. Today, we remember the dead. We give thanks for their sacrifice and the freedom that we enjoy as a result. But for all that to make sense, we rejoice also in the resurrection of Jesus, which assures us that life laid down for others is not senseless or in vain. It is the necessary path to life and peace and justice that he brings in his kingdom. Amen.